Maybe that's the old Neanderthal man. And uh, am I in the picture? Yeah, I think so. And uh, I've got my spear as well. You see, got this pointy tip on the end. Yeah, so I'm quite matching this guy. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some greenery on the top. Uh, not as tall as I am, but uh, my hometown is actually uh, quite keeping the old tradition uh, or history up a bit in sort of artwork like that. Brass. Yeah, it sounds hollow. Uh, bronze, bronze statue, statue. And uh, look at this massive pack. I haven't got that much. <laughs> but yeah, rumor than yeah, I am. The definitely got guy. the bigger nose uh, yeah. on the back. Well, you anyway, got the tail. just to show you and, uh, how yeah, there's next to uh, traffic. And uh, yeah, so well, <laughs> just to keep it up. The time tunnel, how they call it. And uh, where this guy is actually walking through. Oh, uh, and actually, yeah, well, it's a time machine, isn't it? I mean, I just went through the time machine and uh, came back. Tell you a bit about this guy. Uh, you may wonder. Uh, yeah, the Neanderthal is actually just down the, uh, the valley, about uh, two miles, where they actually found these guys. Uh, well, the remains in the. Uh, an old cave and um, yeah so there's a museum as well it's all the ancient uh, stuff stone tools and yeah uh, well just sort it matching the uh, tarp canvas tarp and uh, plush palatka equipment of course that's what these guys most probably used most of the time in the year and only went into the caves in winter or really really harsh weather or maybe raising their kids or stuff but uh, in general they used to be on the move like uh, uh, nomads and uh, yeah that's uh, well, I think it matches quite well the um, the tarp and the uh, poncho I'm making up so I'll just cut this in between hope you enjoy <laughs> yeah that's the old Neanderthal uh, got a uh, tarp tent right behind me and uh, yeah so I can join this uh, guy up here with a stick you know I've got my own stick and uh, as you can see obviously the Andantar uh, man didn't die out so far it still keeps the uh, tradition up here in my hometown <laughs> yeah there's some we got some artists around and uh, I may just uh, try to get into this uh, cozy hut. Uh, this is actually an um, electric supply uh, concrete thing. And uh, I just uh, did a bit artwork on it. So, yeah, it's like, you see, like the guy here. It's almost like me here. One wood up there. I'm not going to fight that one. <laughs> well, that's all they do it in my hometown. They even put the antler souvenir on the top. And uh, impression of my hometown. Um, about, yeah, must have been a few hundred thousand years ago. Uh, and now it's actually behind some bars. Uh, yeah, the wonder is who's actually behind the bars, the modern days men or the old uh, free rooming people. A top tent was always a good option. Give me a quick breakfast, having a bit of porridge in the morning as usually, and uh, because. Uh, what I'm gonna do today needs some energy and you can't hold up without 
some proper breakfast I know others they rather like bread and stuff but porridge it's easy and quick done and uh, yeah cutting the apples into it and uh, I got some cinnamon in there well, that makes oh I forgot the raisins okay let's see Got this one and now it's the easiest way of uh, having your uh, apples cut in pieces in little blocky bits and uh, that's how that works and once you get used to it it's a piece of cake tick tick there you go right. and a uh, decent hand raisins in there and uh, another little apple dispose quite a few of them because they don't last very long in the warmer weather conditions they get all soft and wobbly so I'm uh, just and usually I'm buying the small ones so that gives a really nice start in the morning and uh, yeah after that projects can start taking place right and now just squirrel it all up and look at that yeah a bit more milk into it just a wreck right Porridge in the morning keeps you going, lasts a long time. A little bit of breakfast is needed because uh, today I tried to start with the uh, plush palatka. I have to uh, rearrange my uh, workspace a bit, turning the table around and make it so I can go around all three. Uh, sides yeah because the uh, the top it's easier um, to lay out and especially in the beginning when I'm cutting it off uh, I need some more space and just with the long side against the wall um, folding it up and let's see his sides hanging over and stuff and marking it all up and once this is done and the important thing for me is preparing the work the workspace in a way that uh, actually encouraged me to carry on with it yeah uh, if you'd only do a bit and then stop and oh i need to forget all about that or say well push it you know but um when you set the workspace up you want to finish it off yeah um, unfortunately I haven't got a huge workspace anymore I used to have a really large workspace like four and a half by three and a half meter yeah and uh, where I could have really long uh, pieces of material slinging them around and uh, um, yeah but I'm a bit limited at home so um, I make the best out of it and after I finish my breakfast, um, getting started. Uh, the last uh, glass of tea because I have to relocate my samovar. I set it up for start before I actually move all my table stuff around. So um, I got enough supply over the day with some tea yeah. it's quite important to get all the filled up 
there's enough uh, supply for the next few hours so I don't have to mess about fill that right up and uh, yeah put my kit on top and that's all set you may wonder but um, while I'm cleaning the table especially on this end um, I'm uh, pouring the sugar into my tea so it's all a bit sticky and a bit dusty all the time so uh, yeah and well let's put it like that it's always nice to start with a fresh clean workspace okay. Let's turn it around a bit. It helps me um, getting having all the space I'm needing uh, so I can actually walk around the table all the way and uh, put in the sewing machine here on the edge. Like so. Yeah. Uh, right on the edge, so I got plenty of space for the material now. And uh, yeah, I need some space for folding it up, and I need and ready to go. So yeah, China Graph at my magic stick. I got uh, several additional tools today which I need quite extensively. A little iron, yeah a little travel iron um, to, uh, well, for the turnovers on the materials and to put the wax in. So um, that's the tools and the magnifying glass. Yeah, I told you about my eyesight. I need that for getting the thread into the needle of the machine. Uh, oh, it's dreadful. Anyway, so I get myself prepared for my big project. Well, actually, it's a smaller project now. The main project used to be the tarp. Yeah, I made two of the big tarps, 3x3 three three meter on this table with a bit of an extension on the side. Um, it took me about for the two weeks for two tarps. Uh, one for my mate Andy and one for myself. So yeah, and um, catching up now with the plush uh, Palatka as a little additional um, weather protection and to, to go with the tarp and I'm trying to make it a bit the same style and uh, in the same fashion um, combine the original um, plush uh, Palatka design and combine that with the uh, DD hammock nylon tarp yeah like the design which i actually used for the tarp and uh, so i'm matching that up a bit now yeah give me a bit time for getting ready it's not as i mentioned before it all takes um, a bit of time and uh, some sorts before all this nice material getting all of stuff, so I don't want that. I want a nice, decent um, project which I can enjoy and actually have to rely on uh, when I'm out in the bush. Yeah, so that's uh, why I'm actually making this project because I'm planning a bit uh, a longer trip into the woods and I don't know how long I'm gonna stay there, but. Uh, yeah, I want to be prepared as best as possible 
and uh, so that's why I'm taking my time to do a decent job and not just a show job and uh, call it a day. Yes, and getting started, switching the machine on. Okay. Switching the machine on, yeah, and that's probably what you were waiting for, or maybe not. Just uh, well, getting the machine ready is the main thing, isn't it? Um, yeah, getting uh, actually changed for start. Don't need the black anymore. We're gonna go for the the brown. Yeah. Getting the bobbin changed. So we got all this already set up properly up here. Yeah, so the thread is feeding through all the thingies. Yeah, obviously takes the old bobbin out, saving the black for next time and uh, feeding the brown bobbin into it. I think it's fairly easy just to see the bobbin sitting in there and there's a slot. So I just want to go in there, pop that in. Oh yeah, now the tricky bit starts where my magnifying glass actually has to come into play because I'm bloody <laughs> can't see this tiny slot on a needle anymore there we go yeah, it did slip out again bloody hell that's something i have to work on that's gonna be a bit of a challenge uh, without glasses i haven't got any glasses i may have to consider and find an optic uh, all right, so now when we get the thread in, and that's it. We're going back to uh, put this black bobbin in there, and uh, all right, that's it for now. The trouble now is because my workbench isn't as big as I would like to have it so uh, especially when it comes to line up the material in uh, the way I wanted it to be so to handle that uh, yeah definitely needed a larger workspace so this will take me a bit longer to figure out which way around and uh, folding it up, marking it up in the way it needs to be uh, before I can start cutting it. So this actually shifting the material forward and backwards and into line it all up, you know, like putting the seam uh, and get it straight. Um, it's quite a task and it takes quite some time. Uh, so, but I have to deal with that, otherwise uh, <laughs> it doesn't work out. Uh, in the end, I wanted to see the right way around and uh, I want to match up because I haven't got any play in the side, so I have to use the full width. Yeah, this is a waving edge here, and um, because I'm cutting it across diagonal, yeah, like. Um, it really needs to be lined up properly, otherwise uh, <laughs> should drop my project in the first place. Right, spare with me, I have to get lost in that, yeah, before I uh, get myself into the... Um, As you see, it's not an easy project, and um, but be getting there in the end. I'm pretty sure about that, and I'm convinced about it because I know what I'm. Well, yeah, I know what I'm doing. So uh, 
spare with me and uh, enjoy all the funny bits that coming across uh, yeah yeah I this is the leftover uh, I got it all squared up dead squared so it's a uh, two and a half by two and a half meter in uh, rectangle uh, fashion uh, you know all the seams that are lined up this is the middle actually <laughs> yeah to fold it a few times to um, well now it's a um, yeah the most important part to get it lined up so I can cut that basically then uh, diagonal and uh, once this is done the main preparation is finished I can use some of the leftovers for the hoodie bit you know for the shoulder bit and the small attachment um, and it's always good to have a bit of a spare uh, yeah give me a break maybe it's time for tea uh, yeah I can put the kettle on and uh, fold this in diagonal or rather marks the points up and then shifting it around another time I'm putting the cat oil that's a good idea Ooh. empty Pull all in and uh, cat on switch it on Okay, yeah, it's important to have a break in between just to um, get a distance from what you're doing before you're actually running into a different uh, route and then completely off trail. Uh, so that's why I'm actually preferring having a cup of uh, tea in between, just a break, a break to think it over or maybe I get a new idea or whatever or how to do it just to try to plan into advance that's where I'm using the kettle brakes well the tea brakes for um, that probably makes sense isn't it yeah um, now it's a bit of a tricky part because what I got I got four layers here yeah and because the material is doubled here yeah so this is the center mark down where my thumb is and um, so I have to <laughs> mark actually one bit up by 50 centimeter right that's basically um, where I'm ending up by going diagonal right so i have to mark that on the opposite side which is if i double that this is so i'm going for 50 here which would basically go that way yeah. so that's what i'm talking about so I marked my initial mark was 50 centimeter of the edge yeah but um, obviously I need some uh, I told you I need five centimeter more for the turnover so uh, I only have to well I need to cut it on 45 centimeter that way right so uh, this is the 50 centimeter mark and if you can see that yeah and this is the 45 uh, of the edge so I'm cutting it actually well I have to line them up here <laughs> you may wonder yeah I've got a little uh, steamy steam iron I'll fill that up with water a bit so um, oops already 
full up. So um, what I'm gonna do, actually iron the edge, the edge where I'm actually gonna cut the material. It's now laid out in diagonal. So uh, instead of marking that up with the pencil, and uh, or if I'm shifting around so getting all out of line again, I put an iron mark in it. <coughs> and that uh, will do the trick. Right. So I got the tips lined up. I'm starting on that end and hope getting that all neat and nice. Lined up, maybe it's bottom. So it gives me a sharp edge. Yeah. And uh, all along. Actually, I doubled that on the other end. So, uh, square that up. It takes a bit of time, but uh, it helps me to get that all straight and uh, easy to. Cut. So I'm not having a pissed edge. Even if I'm cutting on the edge. But yeah, that's why this little iron comes in handy. And even got a little watery puffy bit so I can actually steam. Uh, iron that as well. <laughs> so I got my sharp iron edge right here and uh, you can check that now because it's going all the way up here right to the next end into the tip here yeah? and that's why I'm going to cut it. So uh, yeah, this is like quite a nice mark, which I can follow now to cut. And uh, because now I'm laying this thing out flat like that. Because I've got a large bench, uh, I have to carry on shifting this material around and uh, make the best out of it. Premiere, but before I do my first cut, yeah, the tea is done now. I'm having a tea and having a sit down. And when I had this cup of tea, I'm gonna cut that diagonal, and um, then there's no way back. Since now it's only marked with an iron, yeah, which is easily to take out again if needed. Just a fold mark here. Yeah? Uh, I could actually, uh, well, if I find a mistake, I could uh, still mend that without doing any harm. So, yeah, that's why I'm having a sit down and having a tea. Maybe one or the other of you uh, wonder uh, how I know so much about this. I have to explain a bit, a little bit like that about it while having my tea. Actually, it's hot now, it's still hot. Um, yeah, I used to work as a trimmer, um, making uh, Land Rover canvas tops. Yeah like the old uh, soft tops for the old Land Rover 
Yeah, series one, series three, series uh, what two, three, and the, all the defender, and the lightweights, and the one to one. Actually, I had a Land Rover one to one forward control myself for 12 years, and I made lots of hoods and tops for this, uh, the soft tops, and uh, I don't know how many hundreds I made, and. Uh, yeah, that's why I, I was working on an industrial sewing machine and shifting around bloody heavy canvas. Uh, this is like uh, a summer dress, sort of uh, for my, for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately. I uh, haven't got any more of the uh, thick canvas actually. It was canvas like uh, 680 gram a square meter. Yeah, imagine this is only 180 gram the square meter. And this here, that's um, it's a slightly heavier material than that. That's about, what was it, 280? Or was it almost? 300 gram so when you fold that it's like cardboard yeah you, you got a nice straight edge just by folding that yeah or go all across with the scissor yeah so this won't work on the thin material that's why i'm using the iron yeah but it's basically the same uh, um, way of uh, marking stuff up and getting it all lined up so uh, imagine I had to shift around material double the weight of that. Yeah, and this this is actually the heavier material, the Chungai making the uh, Saswa standard uh, uh, tent top tent. Well, it's 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 like a lavu tent. Yeah, uh, a top. It's not a square one. It's it's. Uh, uh, half moon shape two half moon shapes yeah and zip together in the middle so that's what this is and this is the ultralight the lighter version the saswa light version yeah which i'm using for the top and obviously for the uh, plush palat now uh, as a small additional top just as a bit of side note so you know where i'm coming from and uh, so you don't need to wonder uh, how the hell I'm, uh, why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> oh, that went into the throat. That's um, where. The magic comes from, yeah. The canvas tops, the soft tops for the Land Rover. That actually was a hard school, and uh, but it proved very, very useful for this sort of bushcraft uh, stuff. Yeah, my magic wand. Okay, now I'm ready for cutting and just to give you a quick uh, overview we are actually well i'm actually here at that point yeah cutting the um, material across and uh, so that what the line here in the middle is yeah just to know it's where the truth comes in there's no way back, not at all. So usually I would cut that this way, but it's actually against the try to keep on the folding. You may wonder why I got this 
marks here, and white marks here, here. It's uh, once I'm actually stitching it together, I got some indication on where to line the material up. It's folded up like this is a triangle. Uh, I'm gonna lose out. This is a cut off. So uh, I'm actually shifting now the material from that point up to here. Yeah, and join these two together. And um, because the material is only uh, well, it's two meter in length, yeah, but only 170 in the width, yeah, this one actually. So I, by shifting the material diagonal, I'm actually adding the needed extension to it, like 32, 33 centimeter, yeah, like that. And uh, so uh, I get two meter in length and two meter in the width just by shifting the material. So and now, yeah, it's stitching time. Now it's machine time. Switching the old tackle on. So uh, yeah, now with my scissors, always handy having the scissors around. Right. So told you have to line this up and pull the trigger down. So there's a foot. So just joining the two halves roughly together, just by doubling it. This is still an easy task. Just uh, overlay this for half an inch, roughly. So I got an, uh, just to fix that together before I do the double seam. So this actually uh, requires some fiddly things so, because the top and bottom tension on the machine is slightly different so there is a bit of shift in the so I may end up one end being shorter than the other one that's why I always need a bit more material to it as you can see it's just uh, a dead easy uh, seam but what I'm gonna do is to get this double seam you know the uh, jeans the old blue jeans double seam yeah so it's basically in Germany they call it a cup knot basically like that and like that and folding that like that and then you get two seams so you got one here and both ends or sides are actually locked off yeah and uh, so this wants to be really straight which I'm actually uh, addressed with the iron again uh, laid flat, flat so I don't get any bulky uh, things but um, I could do this with needles but 
by having a double seam it just uh, strengthens the material and uh, it's not shifting anywhere, anywhere anymore. Done. The first seam is done. Cutting the thread off. Alright. Now, we're on the other end now. See, I don't know if you can see that. This is a, the, the other side of the, well, the, the other triangle thing. So, um, yeah. And now we do the double seam. I'm doing the double seam, but I uh, have to lay that flat out and uh, iron that to get that nice and straight. Shaking for too much this camera, but that's the second seam, as you can see. Maybe it's a uh, double seam, so that's actually locking off on the inside and the outside, and that's gonna be waxed the seams both inside and outside, and then iron in. And that uh, makes a whole lot nice and waterproof. So uh, just uh, give this another seam to finish that off. Done. I got my big large sheet. Uh, make sure I'm not getting any material caught up underneath. And uh, I get this nice and straight. Quite a bit of material to shift through the machine, but um, it's easier on the outside just to seam around. Um, it's just because <laughs> going right through the middle, and uh, it's quite a bit of material to go. sure I'm not getting any material caught up underneath. And uh, how do I get this? Last few inches. Here we go. And walk it off. And that's it. Yeah. That's it. See, a bit, cut this off. Well, scissors for that. Yeah. See, uh, whoops, that's it. So now I got my two pieces joined up. See, I got this end where I marked the. Uh, the joint together and this is a five centimeter more this is two meter mark this is a 550 or five uh, two meter and five centimeter so doing that here and on the other end as well this is just the opposite side yeah so here and here Oops, all right, so, cut 
cutting the triangles off. I'm done with it for today. And uh, yeah, looks like worked out so far. Um, yeah, obviously, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fold this up in, and check it across here yeah? if that all nice and square. But, um, well, I guess it was a long day today, uh, so you had the um, center seam, yeah, this was the main seam, all the other ones are only just going around and put a few bits on, it's fairly fast, quick to do, but getting the, this last piece, this large piece together, diagonal, that was uh, my main goal for today, and it looks like, well, there wasn't any mischief in it, and it looks fairly nice. Um, what I, uh, bop, 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 should I do the wax on? Yeah, okay, okay, a bit more extension. I uh, give you a quick um, idea how I'm sealing this off with wax, so I don't forget that. Um, yeah, I iron the seam with some wax on it and to seal all the seams off with the waterproof. And that's the last I do for today. You remember the wax? Um, still saved a bit of the block. And uh, what I'm doing, doing now, just uh, wipe a bit of the wax onto the seam. Yeah. And just like that. And it doesn't need to be very perfect. So, and then I'm just iron the wax into the fabric. It's uh, the same wax, actually just paraffin wax, yeah, and um, which they actually used on the material itself to make it waterproof. Maybe not too much. I'm putting on there just uh, on the seam and just to rub it on and give that melt that in. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit dark, but. When I did the main top, didn't made a mess like that, but did it the same way. Just work uh, that in. So that's where the little iron comes in handy. Makes life much easier. Okay. Give it another. Get it rid of all the dark spots. It's supposed to soak in quite well. So, let's see. And, uh, that's it. Same on the inside, but I'll spare you watching that. Fold it up, it's nice and square. Um, so, this actually, I call it a day now. Um, this is my new pl plush palatka. Not quite finished yet. I have to do the seams all around here yeah? and um, the shoulder bits on and the buttons and um, you know all the closure stuff but um, this is a nice little hand size um, piece of kit 
which uh, fits easily in my pack. Um, it's not too bad on the weight actually, I can live with that, but um, gonna be a valuable piece of kit. So this is not finished yet, stay tuned. Um, uh, there's quite some fiddly bits to do on it, but um, I'm getting to it on the next video. So stay tuned and um, enjoy this one. And now I'm gonna editing this and just ship that on the old internet. See you, thanks a lot and um, subscribe and leave me some comments, whatever you like. Um, yeah, I keep you updated on the on the posh, plush, palashka, palatka, plush, palatka, um, the ultralight canvas. Yeah, not it's a military one, this is a civilian version, my own creation, and I put on my own ideas and uh, stay tuned. So, yeah, best wishes from an old Neanderthal. See you soon. Bye.